What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you're at. It's the Earth, Earth Master here, back on this early Friday morning. Uh, well, technically Thursday night here, our, our time, January 12, 2024, uh, on this Friday, 12.07 a.m. California time. Uh, out here with Missy Mimi's. How's it going, guys? Uh, 5.9 earthquake showing up here in the area of Alaska. This is uh, coming in right now within the last few minutes. Uh, we did see some uh, beautiful S wave or P wave and S waves coming in right now to the area. There is the primary wave and uh, subsequent S waves here on the uh, Barrett station uh, at various stations here across the West Coast, including Yellowstone, Mount St. Helens, and Petrolia there in Northern California. So uh, somewhat of a larger earthquake here around the uh, North American and the Pacific plate boundary. Been a little while since we've seen any movement out here. This is a really shallow earthquake at about 0.6 kilometers at the uh, surface levels here of that plate boundary between the North American and the Pacific plate. I did pull up here historical data uh, since about the year, well, since 2000 or so. Uh, so this is about the only quake here in this area of recent activity. We did see some movement back in 2003 with a 5.9, a little bit further down the plate boundary, and some larger scale activity back in 2000 and also 2014. Now this area can see some large movement. It did see a 7.5 back here in 2013. So no doubt uh, this area very capable of producing some significant uh, large earthquakes. So we'll keep an eye along the plate boundary down south here. It looks like a little bit of adjustment may be uh, in store here. The general motion here of the plate, of course, you got the uh, Pacific plate heading off to the northwest in this plate boundary and the North American plate heading towards the, uh, the south, southeast, if you will, general uh, direction in a way. So that could amplify conditions out here across the uh, west coast. We'll definitely keep an eye on it. But uh, either way, it's been a little while since we've seen any type of movement out here in that area of the uh, plate boundary. As uh, far as the rest of the uh, globe goes, uh, for the most part, uh, well, aside from out here in Afghanistan, still seeing some activity in the aftershock department. A couple fours here in the last 24 hours. Um, let's see what else we have across the area. Uh, Mariana Trench has been seeing some movement here uh, as well with a pretty shallow five-pointer. And uh, some activity stirring up here across the, uh, obviously, the Java Trench and Indonesia Islands area where it's always active. Quite a bit of activity stirring up here, including, it uh, looks like a 3.3 .3 coming into the area right now. So keep an eye on this area. Uh, overall, 24 hours here showing some, uh, definitely some elevated activity out here globally, I would say. That's quite a bit of movement compared to the last couple days uh, in terms of earthquake uh the multitude of numbers out here definitely been increasing. Uh, South America area seeing a handful of earthquakes as well. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, movement here on the USGS map. Latest earthquake shows a 4.6 down here into the Perucelli Trench pretty deep. 112 kilometers there at uh, about 2 o'clock my time here. South Sandwich Trench, a small amount of activity. Uh, looks like a 4.8 on the southern edge here of the plate boundary earlier this evening so some movement taking place here well down south but uh, the bigger picture paints a, a larger scale event taking place here it looks like a lot of movement amongst the, uh, the plates uh, some activity up here across mount rainier right smack dab at the summit region with a 1.1 and a 0.6 earlier this afternoon uh, no further movement, though, to note across that area, but uh, let's double-check the trimmer map here tonight and see what we have. 105 epicenters of trimmer across the uh, Washington area and also Northern California. Not a huge amount of trimmer, uh, and that's continuing the trend here of uh, trimmer activity. Very minimal conditions there in the trimmer department of the Cascadia subduction zone. Mount Rainier. See what we got going on here across the uh, area. There's those two earthquakes reported earlier this afternoon. Now the seismograph stations here, if they're working, should pick them up. Uh, we'll see what is being uh, mentioned here on this St. Andrews. Oh, well, this one's all out of whack here. Not looking uh, at all functionable. So 
Let's check out a uh, different station here. Some of these work. Sometimes they uh, do not work. So let's see if Camp Muir is working. Mount Rainier. Is that right, Muir? I think so. <laughs> Look at that S wave here coming in from that uh, 5.9 possibly could get upgraded i was watching the seismograph stations here and it looks like that may be somewhat of a a little bit bigger than a 5.9 so i wouldn't doubt it if we see this thing get upgraded that's a beautiful signature there on so, that side, so far as um local activity though uh very minimal out here at best i mean i don't even see that uh, mentioning of the point one or 1.1 and a point six out here maybe in the static of the background of the seismograph noise uh, but for that, uh, very minimal conditions out there. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, a little bit of smaller earthquake activity out here today. Earlier this afternoon, it looks like. Um, let me go check out the Yellowstone seismograph stations here. And uh, obviously, these are going to pick up the uh, movement there from that 5.9 off the coast of Canada. Um, go back here. That's the uh, P wave, some S waves coming in there. The majority of the stations should pick it up rather nicely. Moose Creek picking it up. Um, and I'm sure some other stations out there. But as far as local seismic activity, um, I'm not 100% certain that that's activity. Looks like some type of outside interference. Uh, very minimal conditions there locally across the Yellowstone area. As uh, far as Southern California goes, uh, just a handful of earthquakes out here. Not really looking at anything major going on, but uh, again, we'll keep the area in mind following this activity here uh, just now up along that plate boundary. It may seem like a ways off, but uh, what goes on up here can no doubt affect areas further down the plate boundary here. So we'll keep an eye on the West Coast maybe for some further uptick. Uh, Hawaii, let's go ahead and jump out here across the Hawaii area. I know we're kind of doing a zigzag type of pattern, but uh, earthquake activity kind of toning down out here. Not a whole lot to report in terms of earthquake activity, but uh, let's give a quick glance here at the tilt meter, which should show uh, some uh, inflation going on there at the Kilauea Volcano. UWE is the station here, and obviously it looks like it's heading up once again. Still at its highest level there since about the 2018 eruption. So no eruption as of yet, but we're continuing to inflate. Obviously, uh, magma accumulation is continuing underneath that area of the uh, Hawaii volcano. The uh, Kuro-Kamachaka Trench over here has shown some deeper movement once again, 4.3 into the northern end here uh, just around the russia area 109 kilometers there for that 4.3 gotta watch this very closely definitely primed i feel for some larger scale movement um far as uh let's see what do we got here across the philippines generally light earthquake and back across the tonga trench and the kermadec islands the latest one shows a 4.8 over here across the plate boundary all four of these earthquakes relatively deep uh, in this area. Not a whole lot of surface uh, adjustment going on currently uh, yet. We'll continue to watch that. Some movement there off the North Island coast. Looks like a couple threes coming in there. Uh, either way, goodness, definitely looking active out here across the uh, plate tectonic world. Did see uh, 4.8 out here in the Mediterranean region earlier. Um, actually, it looks like USGS keeping that as a 5.0 around the Greece area, Mediterranean Sea outside of Crete, 29 kilometers deep here, uh, just prior to this plate boundary, the subduction zone. Uh, and far as the Atlantic Ocean goes, well, doesn't look like too much activity stirring up out there aside from way down south. Not a whole lot there across the Iceland area for now. Um... Let's see what we got here for the Iceland activity. Got about 46 earthquakes here, mainly across the uh, rift zones of the uh, Iceland area. <clears throat> A little spot up north here, it looks like. 
Uh, this area has been swarming up here, uh, getting some larger quake activity here over the last couple days across various areas, uh, various volcanoes as well uh, in this region. Of course, that uh, volcano right here in the yellow that's been upgraded here recently, but it's been going through a trend of upgrade and downgrade here consistently over the past couple months. So uh, not a whole lot new activity there across that region. The area of Grindavik, of course, uh, this is the area of interest in terms of most recent fissure activity. Only shows a handful of earthquakes here tonight. Uh, really not seeing any major change here across the area. But we'll continue to watch that and report back on any changes that take place. Space weather activity. Well, looks like we're currently flaring in the sea flare category, C2.3. That is coming off of... Uh, well, it could be a combination of all these sunspots here measuring up to a sea flare category uh, level, but uh, really no huge events taking place. Uh, look at the magnetogram here shows various sunspots facing the Earth, uh, but literally there's not a whole lot here to report in terms of any major regions of interest. Uh, you know, all of these may be, may be capable of producing some sea flare activity, but uh, doesn't look like anything uh, higher than that, at least looking at the magnetogram image. 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 45, X flare around 5% chance or so. And uh, as you can see, not a whole lot of the aurora potential across the uh, KP index. Um, just kind of watch this and see how it goes. Uh, Storm Prediction Center as we head into the Friday time period um, shows. Obviously, an enhanced risk here across portions of Texas, Arkansas, southeastern Oklahoma, and Louisiana here. Got a, a decent threat for some uh, tornado activity, wind, and some hail threats out there. Now, that is uh, listed here for uh, today. This is the current day one outlook and uh, valid day one here's the current day one the expected forecast here for uh friday a little bit later in in the afternoon time period as that low uh shifts further to the east bringing with it that severe weather potential tornado exists tornado potential exists out there five percent zone um well out there spread spreading out pretty far uh, and of course the wind event uh five well 30 percent chance or so in this area of uh, Mississippi, it looks like. All right, uh, numerical models as we put this thing into motion. I'm hoping for some change out here across the West Coast. Uh, I want to run a total accumulated precipitation map here and just see what this looks like. Um, Pacific Northwest is just getting hammered uh, this winter with quite a bit of precipitation. Northern California, yes, but not so much down here in the valley. Uh, that doesn't quite look like an impressive January uh, storm system out there. At least a GFS model. Uh, the ECM WF model shows a little bit more, uh, a little bit more potential in terms of uh, precip there across Northern California. So we'll kind of see that see how this goes on. Um, hopefully this will change as we get into the uh, February and March time period. And catch up on some of our rainfall totals. Uh, in the meantime, folks, I um, hope everyone has a, uh, a good night. Uh, keep an eye again on uh, areas downstream of this 5.9. That could, uh, you know, we could see a little bit of enhancement here across this area in terms of earthquake uptick. I'll definitely keep an eye on it. For now, uh, have a good night. Uh, we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on on this Friday. I know it's Friday right now, but uh, well, of course we'll do a Friday update when we wake up here earlier today or later today. Have a good night. I'll catch you guys back here a little bit later. Have a good night, guys.